people, and in particular children, who overuse mouth breathing as opposed to nasal breathing, have changes in the structure of the face that, well, to be quite direct, makes them far more unattractive than if they were to mouth breathe. It also discusses the chewing of foods as essential to mouth and face development. If your parents and you did things right, you should be able to place your, your entire tongue on the roof of your mouth with your mouth closed. Chewing foods is essential to tooth and mouth and face development. Um, these days, many children slurp their food. Many adults slurp their foods. Uh, many adults are eating like babies. And of course, babies before they develop their mature teeth. So that's the second point. So nasal breathing, good. Mouth breathing, bad for craniofacial development. Chewing hard foods, chewing a lot on both sides of the mouth. Great for craniofacial development, oral development, tooth development, and tooth health which by the way are correlated with a number of other things like cardiovascular health and metabolic health, very, very interesting links there. The entire field of orthodontia, things like um, braces, things like headgear, things like retainers are the byproduct of poor um, breathing and let's just say uh, overconsumption of soft foods in place of hard foods uh, behavior. In some cases, you'll see kids that were um, mouth breathers or were eating a lot of soft foods, and then they recovered their behavior, so to speak, and became nose breathers. Of course, we have to mouth breathe when we're exercising really hard, or when we're eating or speaking, we're going to mouth breathe. But at rest, we should nasal breathe is the argument. And that greatly improves craniofacial um, aesthetics. And the good news is this stuff is modifiable across the lifespan. And, um, and so the book isn't arguing for anyone to purchase anything. You don't need a jaws or sizer. To, to the credit of, of um, products for um, exercising the jaw, sure, there are muscles of the jaw. If you breathe through your mouth as opposed to your nose, the, first of all, you bring in less oxygen than you would. If, so you're, you're limiting, you're effectively putting yourself into a state of apnea, right, which is bad during sleep. And guess what? It's bad during waking states also. It, you're getting less oxygen to your brain, bad. The sinuses, you know, we hear our, my sinuses are clogged or my sinuses, the sinuses, wish I had brought a skull with, with me because one of the most impressive things about a skull, human skull being no exception, is that the sinuses are literally these little uh, tubes or channels through which fluid and air can move. And the sinuses, even though they are essentially the, created by the fissures between different bones, so like there's two, two or three different bones that are interdigitated and create these tunnels, they're actually fairly plastic in the sense that they can be modified in terms of their shape. And, and so people will say, well, I have a deviated septum. Guess what? You should try and emphasize breathing through both nostrils as a, in order to uh, undeviate your septum. Now, if someone has a broken nose or something that's really structurally abnormal, they may need corrective surgery. But purely through na deliberate nasal breathing, so it could be mouth taping at night, but also just deliberately nasal breathing during most of your cardiovascular training, unless you need to really you know, hit the gas, in which case, mouth breathe is going to help dilate the sinuses and lead to better airflow, which makes nasal breathing easier. The nasal microbiome is particularly well suited to um, scrub or uh, capture and destroy viruses, bacteria, and even some fungal infections. So in other words, when you're breathing in through your mouth, you're more susceptible to infections. This is important heading into winter as well. Um, they have some impressive images in this uh, book of kids that were twins that were raised separately, one by a group that eats a lot of um, let's just say tougher foods that require chewing versus one that's slurping their food. And I mean, one kid is literally incredibly attractive, perfect dentiture with no orthodontia or, de or you know, regular dentistry. And the other kid is, they have the horse, or like the horsey smile. Um, there are also some very impressive images in the book, or we could say depressing, of kids that were pretty attractive as kids. And then there, there's an example of a kid who got a pet hamster. He was allergic to the hamster. He switched, as a consequence, he becomes a mouth breather. And then the, the characteristic um, change in the face when one overdoes mouth breathing is that the chin starts to move toward the, um, toward the neck and the, the rest of the face goes out, but also the eyes become droopy. Again, it's pretty straightforward. No products required. Chew, chew your food well, chew on both sides of your mouth, um, especially if you're a young person, but even if you're not, um, be a nasal breather, really chew at your food. Try and, this probably also has benefits in terms of limiting um, unessential or low, low nutrient density calories. You know, slurping your food all the time.
drinking in excess of calories is probably not good. And, and eat like an adult.